Welcome back to Hawk Stools. I'm Tom. So uh, this little beauty uh, jumped into my truck the other day. Uh, <laughs> the story on this is uh, um, this was a, a government auction, a local government auction, and uh, that I noticed. And I saw this machine. I uh, threw in a kind of a low bid, actually. And uh, guess what? They called me and said you won. So here it is. I just brought it home the other day. Um, what it is, is it's a drill press, okay? Uh, it's a variable speed uh, Allen, um, you know, basically a heavy duty uh, industrial drill press. Um, it's got a uh, half inch capacity, about 13 millimeter capacity, uh, variable speed. We'll talk about all this in a little more detail. Um, so we're going to go around and we'll survey this machine a little bit and um, show you some of the features of it. Uh, it's got some unique features, I think. And um, so, uh, as you guys know, I already have a drill press, so right now I'm kind of, I'm trying to decide uh, uh, which one is uh, gonna, gonna stay and which one's gonna go. So I don't need two. So anyway, let's get in a little closer. We'll look at some of the cool features of this machine and uh, we'll talk a little more about it. All right, let's take a look at the table area first here. Um, this, this is kind of unique in drill presses. It's got a, just a very large flat table. Um, this would make clamping things down a little tricky. Um, it's got a couple of tap tolls here. Let's see, can you, yeah, you can see that. A couple of tap, like six tap tolls, uh, center hole. Now it's got a float lock vise, so, you know, if you have, uh, small parts you can put them in there and then you can lock them down um, but if you, you want to put a large plate on here clamping to this might be a little bit tricky here so you'd have to rig something up uh, out of these holes so that to me clamping stuff on this could be a little bit tricky now it's cast iron it's really nice it's got a planed uh, th this was planed originally um, got a big planer here with a big broad tool um, it's got a, uh, let's see, yeah you, guys, yeah, you can see that. It's got a scraped column here that you can adjust this upper column. Um, I think that's just to, to change uh, how much uh, space you can uh, put between the, uh, the drill chuck and, well, no, that doesn't change that. What does that do? What does that buy you? Um, I, don't, I don't know. What does that buy you? It doesn't make any sense. Well, anyway, the, the upper column looks like it can slide down. Um, huh, i got to think about that a little bit. What does that buy you? So maybe when you lower the table way down, you can get this a little closer. I don't know. Um, got a big locking lever over here. And like I said, it's, uh, the, there's some crud on here. I need to clean it, um, but it's, it's, it's hand scraped. Kind of neat. Uh, big dovetail ways here. So the table moves up and down very similar to how a, uh, a bridge port does, a uh, milling machine. And we'll show that, I'll show that mechanism in a second here. A um, little depth stop here. This is a little hand spinner depth stop and it's got a little locking uh, mechanism here to, uh, to lock that. Um, doesn't have a quick release. Now, this doesn't have a ton of travel here. This has, it looks like, Maximum travel is around four inches, um, but you know, that's pretty good. Uh, you might get a little more by taking that stop off. I don't know if there's a, a hard stop inside. Uh, Morse taper, um, so you can put Morse taper drills or a drill chuck. Looks like a number two Morse. Okay, so let's look at some of the other, uh, let's look at the upper controls and then we'll look at the lower controls and then the electrical. All right, this is the upper controls here. Uh, you got to start and stop, okay? Um, now this is what really attracted me to this machine here. It's got a, uh, it's got a high low range here and it's just a knob to turn it. So I don't know if it's a two speed motor or what its deal is. I haven't pulled the cover off to take a look. And then to change speeds, you have basically some settings here. So you got a high and a low, and then uh, the speeds are listed here. So the low end of this is, what is the low? 
looks like the very lowest low range is 350 and the high of the high range is 5200 which is so this is very appealing here for small drills and you can go down uh, you know pretty slow too. Uh, 350 you know it'd be nice to to get below 200 or something like that it would be great but uh, but you know you got a milling machine if you uh, you need to go lower than that the higher speed on this you know the large range is uh, I guess what I should say is uh, the nice feature it's got a very wide range so uh, now let's look at the uh, let's look at the table adjustment next because that's uh, pretty cool and another really uh, nice feature of this machine okay so you can see the screw mechanism here and it's got a um, actually a fairly large range here so what I think uh, this thing is capable of is uh, so this is your your main adjusting screw and then this is a a screw that you can turn by hand if you really got to drop the table way down but you know most drill presses have a really kludgy uh, um, method of raising and lowering the table this one is just absolutely well thought out we got a handle goes on here on, and we're up and down it's at the front of the machine you don't have to reach around the back and the lock is right there okay so now I suspect if I lock that firmly and then take the load off of the screw yeah I can turn this now and get more range out of it okay yeah so let's do that Oop, there it goes okay got the splinter here um, it's got a nice thrust bearing in there a little right angle gearbox it's uh, um, now that is a uh, just a really nice smooth acme screw um, table adjustment pretty cool um, uh, the other thing let's see can you see that? Let's, let's uh, double check here. So this this one, uh, the other thing interesting about this is it's equipped with a foot pedal. Now I think this is an aftermarket deal. The the guys that uh, were using this uh, set this up. So when you turn it on, it doesn't come on until you step on the foot pedal. And if you have a problem, it's kind of like a like a dead man switch. You just ooh, you back up from the machine a little bit, and then it stops. Okay, kind of a nice feature. So, uh, and we're going to try it out here. So let's uh, let's go take a look at the uh, the back end of the machine, and uh, and then uh, go from there. All right. So here's the rear of the machine. This also looks to be um, uh, redone from original. This is a modern Hoffman box here. Um, here's our uh, our inputs here. It's a three phase machine. Okay, four wire, three phase. Let's open the uh, and it's got a disconnect. Let's open this up. Yeah, so this is all modern stuff here. Um, your disconnect, relay, or is that an overload? What is that? Yeah, it's an overload. Uh, it's, yeah, it's actually well protected. It's got fuses and a uh, and a, an overload here too. Interesting. Okay. And uh, this is always nice to see a uh, wiring diagram. Okay, we we love to see that kind of stuff. Um, this is all pretty nicely done in here. So, uh, um, L1, yeah, okay. So feed your feeds come in here. L1, L2, L3. Okay, and off we go. So, um, oh, and then here's the here's the foot pedal coming in here. So. Uh, Okay, all well, these look pretty good. Hey, what do you say we hotwire this thing and give it a try, huh? Um, I think I got a three-phase cord around here, and we can uh, get some power to this pretty easily and uh, give it a spin. I know you guys are dying to see that. And so, oh yeah, while we're here, you can see this upper column is bolted to the lower column here, so uh, it's kind of a two-piece setup. This thing is heavy too. Um, it's not Bridgeport heavy, but uh, it's uh, definitely not made out of sheet metal. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the inside here. I took the cover off. Um, I was curious how this uh, this drive works. It's actually it's pretty sophisticated. So it has a multi-speed motor, and our uh, our range select uh, operates a uh, 
uh, multi-pole switch here, uh, like a drum switch. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's right here. Um, then the high-low range looks like it's a kind of a two-to-one thing here, and there's a dog clutch under this side. So direct drive is from the large pulley to the small pulley here. Okay, and then when you engage this, then it goes from this, let's see, this pulley to this pulley and back, or excuse me, from here to here to here and back, okay? And that's how you get that secondary reduction, which is kind of neat. So that's a tricky motor in there. It's a multi-speed motor, which is, uh, um, you know, they're not unheard of, but, uh, um, you know, in the days of before VFDs and things like that, uh, um, so they have multiple sets of windings in them is basically how it works. Um, kind of neat. So it's just V-belts, common V-belts. That's, you know, you can get these at the hardware store. Um, this all looks very nice up here. Preloaded bearings uh, with retainers and lock rings. Um, heavy castings. Uh, these nameplates look brand new, basically. They've been covered up the, the whole life of this thing. So it's a uh, four-speed constant torque motor. Uh, and the motor's made by, uh, it's a multi-speed motor made by uh, the Lewis Alice Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Pretty cool. So uh, let's get some power to this pup and uh, spin her up and see what the deal is. Alright, so there's the name plates. Uh, this looks like the original one. Uh, Charles G. Allen Company, Bar, Bar, uh, Bar Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Um, this is an inventory tag, a government inventory tag. That's uh, Atomic Energy Commission, Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. So this actually kind of dates this machine uh, probably um, 60s or early 70s, something like that. It could be older than that actually. So I haven't done any research yet to see uh, if this company's still around or what. Um, and this is probably original here, National Machine Tool Builders Association. Um, and then, uh, of course, hey OSHA, is this okay? Okay, so uh, we got this thing hot wired, and uh, I ran it through the speed range, it seems to be fine. Um, I was being a little conservative. Um, one of these says um, uh, stop to shift, but the other one doesn't, so I just kind of assumed it was the same situation. It actually behaves itself better uh, when you shift these on the fly. Uh, so let's just, we'll run it through the speed ranges. The top end of this thing is actually pretty impressive. So, uh, so I got the foot pedal down here and uh, make sure I'm on here. So that's uh, the lowest speed there, which is 350 RPM. And then to change speeds, so that's 535. And then we go to 720. And then the next step in the low range is 1100. Like that. Smooth as silk. All right, and then you just can, you know, you can just do whatever you want here. So, uh, all right. So now let's shift to the. Uh, Shift to the high range here. Okay, there it goes. So it's counterclockwise, getting used to it. So this is um, 1670 high range. All right, and then uh, the next one's 2520. Then we go to 3400. So that's uh, zipping along pretty good there. And then the next one's 5200. So you can actually, uh, um, with 5200 RPM, you can run some small drills, uh, uh, which is uh, pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this thing right now. Uh, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. 
and uh, drill some holes and uh, actually you know what uh, let's let's set up let's drill a hole with it and see how it behaves uh, under load All right. little, little test, test victim there so this is the this float lock vise uh, for those of you that that haven't seen it then uh, you ratchet it up and then you use this little dorky uh, hand thing there all right okay so let's see what we got that looks good there all right, let's go with that sure okay so why not okay and then we'll lock this down this keeps the world from rotating on us and Gotta get used to this foot pedal. Uh, it looks a little snappy there. And it gets a little fast, so let's uh, go into low range there. That's a little slow. 535, 720. I think this thing can handle 1100. Or, you know what? Let me move the camera. My big fat arm is uh, right in the way of the world there. Looks like a drill press. <laughs> right. Makes a mess like a drill press. <laughs> answer any questions and you guys have some specific questions go ahead and throw them up in the comments I'll try to answer them and uh, uh, we'll go from there yeah, it looks like it has a light here too I missed but uh, um, it doesn't, doesn't work right now so I gotta get a new bolt all right thanks for watching guys